since we're all here, we'll start. Good, good af afternoon, ev everyone. Um, it, it is Tuesday, Mar March 1st, 2022, and th this is a special special board meet, meeting of the Adelanto L Elementary School Dis District. And uh, can I please, I'm gonna call to or order, and can I have roll, roll call, please? Yes, Madam President, we did start at 5.30. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll take roll call. Trustee Eckes. Present. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench present. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, present. Trustee Webster. Trustee Webster, present. Trustee Bentz. And Bentz, pres present. Okay, and uh, 1.04, can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, place your right, right hand on your heart. Red, ready, begin. I pledge I allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag. flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Okay, now number two, uh, adopt, adoption of the agenda. Agenda uh, 2.001 pr proposed uh, additions, deletions, and adjust adjustments in the order of bid business. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Madam President, we don't have any. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, 202 adop adoption of the Agenda, can, can I get a mo motion to uh, approve? I guess my motion. Okay, I got a mo motion from Ekis, and I need, need a se second. Webster, I second. Thank you, and I need, need a vote. Trustee Ekis. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee Webster. Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Benz. And Benz, aye. Mo motion pass passes five zero zero. Um, three clo close ses session deck declarations. We will be ta taking I items three point zero two and three point zero four in into close ses session. Uh, four pub public test testimony. Be, be, be before closed ses session. Oh, um, uh, sorry, Madam President. There are no uh, speakers for closed session. Thank you. Okay. So let, let's go on to five re recess to closed ses session. Can can I get get a mo motion? I I'll second. Okay. Ekis second. Turn Turner mo motion. Yes. Ekis second. Okay. Can I have a vote, please? Trustee Ekis. Aye. Trustee Lafrey. Aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner. Aye. Trustee Webster. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Benz. And Ben's I mo, mo motion pa passes for, I mean five zero zero. The time is now five thirty five, and we'll see see you on the the other side. And we are the recording start started. Okay, let let's go on. We are go, go, going to do a 6.001 call to or, order, and I need a roll roll call, please. Trustee Eckes. Present. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, present. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, present. 
Trustee Webster. Oh, I thought I saw saw her. Is is she she mute muted? Mike, can you Trustee okay. Webster here? All right, good. Just check check it. Okay. And Trustee Bence. Bence is pre present. The time is now seven seven twenty three, and we have a quorum. Um, seven, seven close close ses session re report. We do not have any re um. We report portable act actions taken during closed ses session. So we will go on to um, eight pub public test testimony. Doc Dr. Mitchell. Yes, Trustee Ben's happy to. Uh, 8.01, the public comment period is administered by state laws as a point in the meeting and set aside for members of the public to share their opinions with the board. Open meeting laws do not permit the board to engage in dialogue or answer questions. The health, well-being, and public safety of community members, public officials, and employees is a top priority for Alonso Elementary School District, consistent with the shelter-in-place orders uh, from the governor and San Bernardino County. <clears throat> board members and <clears throat> board members and staff may participate in this meeting via Zoom. Excuse me. <clears throat> this meeting is in compliance with the governor's executive order, order AB 361 which will provide local legislative bodies with the continued flexibility to meet remotely without adhering to the Brown Act, Act's teleconferencing rules during a proclaimed state of emergency. So with the following key limitations, number one, public comment must be allowed in real time. And number two, if there are technological issues, the meeting must be stopped and no vote or other official action can be taken until the public can once again participate in the proceedings. Protocols for speakers, any person who wishes to address the governing board on closed session agenda items only make only must complete and submit an AESD speaker request form five minutes before the meeting is called to order. If the comment is about something that is not on the agenda, will be heard during the public comment on non agendized items. Period. Once once the, that part of the meeting is over, comments will only be taken on agenda items during the discussion of those items. The board values public comments, and although we cannot take action or discuss items not on the agenda, we listen carefully and appreciate the input from the public. Additionally, a speaker can be cut off ex uh, for exceeding the amount of time or for willfully causing an actual disruption to the meeting. Before cutting a person off or removing someone, the board will give at least one clear warning. Uh, if you're cut off for one last time, please consider that, that you're warning. Individual speakers are allowed three minutes to address the board on each closed session agenda item. The board limits the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes with board consent. The board president uh, may increase or decrease the time out allowed for public presentation, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. The president may take a poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask that additional persons speak only if they have something new to add. It's 8.01, Madam President. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. Uh, do, do we have a, a rep, representative from ADTA? You're on mute, sir. Um, I don't see Nanette in the office. I, I mean, in, online, I do see uh, Ms. Rader. Um, Ms. Rader, are you speaking for yourself or, or, or for ADTA? Board recognizes Jennifer Rader. Excuse me, Dr. Mitchell. I do see Nanette Cadilly in the oh. audience. Oh, great. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll come back to uh, Ms. Raylor next. Uh, the board recognizes Nanette Cadilly. Thank you. There she is. Hello, I'm Nanette Cadilly, the ADTA president. Good evening, trustees, cabinet, Dr. Mitchell, ADTA, and CSEA. I'm here tonight to talk about the current plan for the layoffs. <clears throat> Although it is within the district's right to determine when a layoff must occur, it is my job as president, as well as my executive board, to make sure that the process is being done correctly, fairly, and legally. We have been told all along that the reduction in force had to do with a decrease in student enrollment, low ADA. Yet on the current resolution, it states 
whereas this action is based on the need of particular kinds of services and not based solely upon a calculation of reduction of average daily attendance during the past two years. The resolution also states, it shall be necessary to reduce or discontinue particular kinds of services. We deserve a valid explanation for this. What are the services being discontinued? What would that would cause these layoffs? Why else would we be reducing the number of certificated employees if not for low student enrollment? Also, I'm questioning the manner in which this process is happening. I requested an ADTA rep to be included in the process with the district and legal counsel, and that was not granted as of yet. What um, this process should be transparent and with checks and balances. It should be done in a way that is most equitable and the least amount of damage to our certificated staff. I am asking that you look into this carefully with open eyes and many questions before you make decisions that affect people's lives and livelihood. You are making decisions that affect our families. Please remember that. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The board recognizes Jennifer Rader. Um, Ms. Rader, you might unmute yourself. Thank you. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Thank you. Got it. Okay. Good evening. Um, I've been teaching in AESD since 1995, and I love this community. I have served under several great principals, and I've worked with some amazing colleagues. I've seen district administrations come and go, and I've seen several generations of trustees come through with varying degrees of integrity. Atlanta is a small but earnest district. We serve a population that is rife with challenges. Children with children from foster care families experiencing economic hardship, second language learners. Most of our families qualify for free and reduced lunch. As teachers, we are intimately acquainted with our students and their families, and we have relationships built on trust and care. Our children deserve the best you can give them, but instead you offer them leftovers and crumbs. Because of all those aforementioned challenges, the state provides us with funding commensurate with our needs. But instead of spending those resources on the children, which mainly means paying teachers and staff, the district hoards and hides money. You juggle monies like sleight of hand artist. Now we see it, now we don't. Here it's restricted, now it isn't. Whoops, now during regular re negotiations, we're broke. The district enjoys a $30 million reserve fund. They are talking about laying off 25 teachers. Teachers we all know will be hired back next fall. That is if they have it left to other districts. The best reason for doing this is to avoid paying medical benefits over the summer break. This is disgraceful. These students deserve the best we can offer them. We teachers already are giving our best. How about you do the same? The district is asking that contract language be changed to allow transferring teachers during the first three weeks of school. This is a futile endeavor as we have all seen year after year enrollment and continues to grow through Labor Day. Shuffling teachers before then only causes more classes to be broken apart and redistributed. This only hurts the kids. They aren't just numbers to be equalized. They are children with feelings. They want to be at home and safe with their teacher from day one. It's extremely disruptive to shuffle students from class to class, forming combos only to have the numbers grow and change again. Many times classes start with a long-term sub because of insufficient staffing especially in the younger grades, and especially after the kids have lost a year to the pandemic, having consistency from day one with one teacher is crucial. But instead of preventing these harmful scenarios, this district wants to lay off 25 teachers and then hire cheaper when we return. This does not serve students' best interests. Please, as a board of trustees, please direct the district to negotiate with us in good faith. There is no reason why we shouldn't be given the full cost of living adjustment allocated by the state without giving up existing contract language. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. And do, do we have a, a rep, representative from um, C, CSCEA? Uh, Madam President, I don't see a representative from CSCEA. Give me one, check, one, one minute to scan again. Team, if you're looking if at the speaker request, do you see a member from CSEA? Uh, no, Dr. Mitchell, there's no speakers from CSEA. 
All right, thank you so much. Uh, so we'll get into the general audience, Madam President, if you can. Okay. All right, so the board recognizes uh, Tracy Moore. Uh, good evening, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. On the agenda tonight under new business is a resolution to get rid of 26 teachers due to a decline in enrollment. Obviously, because of the circumstances of the last few years, we have seen a slight drop in enrollment. However, I do not believe that is justification for eliminating teachers, and I'll tell you why. Currently, we have more than a dozen openings across the district that are not filled by certificated teachers. Many of these spots have had long-term subs the entire year and the district has not been able to fill them. The reason for these openings is because across the nation, there is a teacher shortage. In spite of this, HR wants you to believe that we are the exception. Right now, we have hundreds of students who show up to class every day and they do not have a certificated teacher. If they're lucky, a substitute shows up and on unlucky days, they are split up and thrown into another teacher's classroom. Both of these situations are not what's best for the students. Many of our kids are receiving lackluster instruction, if any at all, because we do not have enough teachers as it is right now. My own son, in fact, has not had a teacher since December. He's in fifth grade at George and his teacher was out of the blue pulled from his classroom in December to be promoted to an admin position within the district. I don't have an issue with his former teacher going after a job that she wants. However, I do have an issue with the district's decision not to fill her empty position. I've already been told by the principal at George that the district has no plans of replacing my son's teacher until next school year. That means my child is going to spend 60% of his fifth grade year with a revolving door of substitute teachers. Obviously, that is not what's best for him or his classmates. My point is this, if we don't even have enough teachers to fill all of the openings that we currently have right now across the district, then how can you justify letting go of anyone? If you do this, we're going to be in an even worse position next year. And if you think that you can just cut these people to save some money for a few months and then hire them back after the school year starts, what will you do when they don't want to come back because they were snatched up by another district that actually pays accordingly and offers fully paid health care? We cannot afford to lose any of our teachers. We need every single person that we currently have, if not more, to meet the needs of our students. Reducing our current amount of teachers is just going to increase class sizes and leave even more unfulfilled spots throughout the district, which again, is not in the best interest of our students. Um, you need to do the right thing for our kids by voting no on this resolution. Uh, my son in particular, who used to love school, complains about going every day now. because he doesn't have a teacher and that's wrong. 15 seconds. Do not throw away quality teachers that our students desperately need. We need every single person right now that we currently have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board recognizes Esmeralda Lopez. You may unmute yourself. I'm trying. Good evening, Adelanto board members and everyone that is connected today. I have emailed the superintendent, Dr. Mitchell, on February 16 at 1.51 p.m. and the board on February 26 at 4.34 p.m. I have not had a response from anyone. My children, along with other children, were placed in independent study without our consent. On Friday, when I was picking up my child, Ms. Peterson, this past Friday, Ms. Peterson called me to a meeting where Tasha Doizan was there without me being notified. A letter was given to me stating that my child would be placed into a temporary independent study. When I stated I would not say, be signing anything, she said that my signature was not needed. On the back of the letter, it states that if I drop my child off to school, the district can issue to give me a letter of civility and trespass education code 44811 penal code 626.8 to me for dropping off my child maskless because he can't breathe in it. He says he feels like he's gonna pass out. This, the, the California uh, State of Human and Health Agency Effective March 1st, 2022, the requirement 
went into a strong recommendation. My children is not sick. They are not presenting any signs of sil or illness and they should be allowed into class. Ms. Tellatore, his teacher has not even chose to collect any work. When we reached out to her and notified her that my child need help, she stated that she can help when my child returns to class. Later on, sent other messages saying that my child, before I was notified about an independent study, that my child would be doing independent work. And I said, I never signed up for this. I'm completely against this. My child and neither of my, both of them, we never consented to this. Our children deserve to be at school. They're healthy. They're eager to learn. They want to be at school. My child is in fifth grade. It's his last year in elementary. You guys are stealing his last year of school by avoiding him. Me as a parent, I'm not going to go and be scared because they're going to issue me a civility letter when I'm doing absolutely nothing wrong but drop, dropping my child off healthy with all his stuff that he needs at school. How is this acceptable? And especially without my consent, my child is not breaking the law. He cannot breathe in his mask. This needs to stop now. My child deserves, both of my children deserve to be in class. My other son has not had any Thank issues with his teacher. But why are they not collecting their work if they supposedly care so much about our children? We need this issue taken care of. Our children deserve to be back in class. They deserve to be learning. That's it for today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're on mute, Dr. Mitchell. Sorry. Uh, the board recognizes Ruby Lopez. Mr. Lopez. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the board recognizes Andres Ochoa. We uh, I skipped that word. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're on mute still. Mike. I've asked him to unmute. There you go. All right. Good evening, board members, teachers, parents, and everybody who has joined. I would like to start by telling you, Mr. Keenan Mitchell, that I don't appreciate how you decided to kick me and my family out of your office the moment my son, Andres Jr., started asking you questions about the mask. Now you are forcefully placing my children into independent studies without my consent of me and my wife, threatening us that if we drop our kids off at school, the district may choose to issue a letter of civility trespass, Education Court 44811, Penal Code 626.8, which may, I remind you, that Education Code 51, 51747 states that independent study is an optional education alternative in which no pupil may be required to participate. Thus, enrollment can only occur if there is a pupil parent education conference to determine whether enrollment in independent study is in the best interest of the ch children's education. Education code 51747. You are taking the right of my children to learn like a normal child. It's Andres, Andres Jr.'s last year at Gus Franklin and he doesn't know if he will be able to see his friends again next year. You are taking time from my kids, time from his life that he will never be able to, to, to recover. That's a shame on you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And the board recognizes Ruby Lopez. Thank you. Thank you. Ruby Lopez. Hi, good, good evening. Good evening. Hello, good evening. I want to start off by saying how completely unacceptable it is and unlawful and you guys are not following our constitutional rights, our liberal rights, our civil rights, it is completely unacceptable that you guys are mandating masks for kids. If a kid is not showing symptoms, if a kid is not, if a kid is six feet away from everyone, it is completely unacceptable. And the pattern of history continues, authority wanting to overdo their power. Can you guys hear me? Authorities trying to do over overdo their power as well, just because you guys think that you guys are district, whatever you guys yes. want to call yourself. No, it's completely unacceptable. This is something that needs to stop. A child should not have to be mandated. Nothing. If that's your opinion, that's your opinion. It's not 
something a child has to do and putting a child in independent study without the consent of a parent is completely unlawful and in who it's not it's not okay and it needs to stop you guys need to calm down with your wannabe authority because it is incorrect um i don't know why it, the purpose of here is helping the kids your job is you have a job because of the kids so it's completely unfair and incorrect that you guys are taking this away no without the kids you guys are jobless so the priority here are the kids so that's what you guys need to start doing and putting your own one your own authority your own pride for whatever reason it's all about the kids it's not about you guys thank you so much thank you thank you the board recognizes on this Ochoa jr He has to unmute. Mike is he no, unmuted? He's. I think he's on now. He's unmuted. I can hear their voices in the background. Got it. Thank you. Go ahead, Andres. Now, oh, he just now, now he, he's mute. Muted himself again. You got to unmute yourself, young man. Thank you. There you go. Start yeah. speaking, Angel. Hi, Angel. Do you, do you hear, hear me? Hello, my name is Angel, and I really want to go back to class. The first time my teacher told me to put on a mask, I said no. Then she said to, for me to put on a mask, and I said no. She told me to go to the office. The second time, she never told me anything. But Mrs. Peterson went to my brother's class and said, if your brother is here, and he said yes. And she went to my class and took me to the office. Now, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Angel. The board recognizes now Andres Ochoa Jr. Oh. Thank you. Do you see Andres on mic? Uh, no, sir, I don't see a junior. I see, I believe, senior who already spoke. Okay. Oh wait. Uh, there, there, there. There's on Andre Dres Jun, Junior. Oh okay. Can you, you see, see him? I, there. I yes, yes. There you go. There you go. Great. Thank you so much. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Andres Ochoa Junior. I am a fifth grader at Gus Franklin. I stopped wearing a mask because I felt I would pass out. I couldn't breathe. My teacher wouldn't let me into class and stop collecting my work. When I needed help, she told me she couldn't help me when I returned. She could help me when I returned to class. We're allowed to take off our mask, play with the balls, but we need to put on a mask after recess while we sweated. How does that make sense? I am, a, I am healthy and I want to go to class. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And thank you. All right. <clears throat> the board recognizes... I don't know if this is a correct name, but Ryan Health. Uh, is there a Ryan Health on? There is, sir. I've asked him to unmute. Great, thank you. All right. I'm ready, yeah, I'm gonna go on. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. I hear you. Perfect. All right, so hey, how's it going? My name is Ryan. I'm actually here with a bunch of folks. We're all up in the town of Sacramento. I'm an attorney. I don't represent anyone in your district yet, but I just wanted to come on and do you guys a courtesy and let you know that you are violating these students' civil rights. And uh, as such, you are liable for damages under the Civil Rights Act. It's Title 42, Section 1983 of the U.S. Code. Your discrimination is exposing you personally, not just the district, but the school board members, the principals, all of those folks personally for damages 
under this law. That's because the kids are engaged in what's called free speech, expressive conduct. The act of remo removing a mask sends a very clear message. It says, I am not going to comply because I am not a sheep, all right? And so this is just a courtesy for the school board members. Uh, go ahead and cease and desist and you won't get sued. Well, maybe not. You've probably already discriminated a bunch against a bunch of kids, but you can at least mitigate your damages and, and you should because the California constitution guarantees these students the right to an in-person education. The only way that can be taken away is through two things. One, parent consent. Two, clear and present danger. These kids removing their masks are not dangerous, okay? They, they don't have guns, drugs, threats of violence. Uh, they actually have a right as well under the, the Education Code 201 to an in-person education free of discrimination and harassment. When you kick these kids out of class, you are violating that provision expressly and you can't do it. So the kids actually, if they want to, have the right to go into class, take off their masks, say no thank you when told to leave, and say no thank you when told to put the mask on. And I would encourage all of the kids tomorrow to go to school, take off your mask, sit down in class, and refuse to leave. Go ahead and call the police. They won't touch them. If they do, we'll sue them. If the teachers touch the kids, we'll sue them too. So for all intents and purposes, the mask mandate in your district is over. It needs to end now. And every day that goes by is adding to your damages because these kids are being discriminated against. So kids, if you're out there listening to this, do not comply. Be peaceful, be respectful, sit down, say no thank you, but do not get up when your teachers tell you to leave because you have the right to be there and they can't take that away from you. So that's all I got to say, but I'm gonna let you guys go because I do have to get back to the other meeting. So take care. Thank you. <clears throat> recognizes Lisa Pinelli. Uh, finally, it let me mute myself. So good evening, board members, cabinet staff, and all community members. Um, my name is Lisa Martinelli, and I have been a teacher in this district for 27 years, and I just wanted to talk to you tonight about the resolution to reduce particular kinds of certi certificated services. And I, I just want to say this language is really weird. I, I haven't seen in this kind of language in all 30 years of my teaching. And I, I would like a clar clarification. I know you can't answer it right now, but maybe the board can give it later during their public comments as to what exactly does this mean? So in addition to this, I, I understand that our district has 400 students less than the anticipated amount, about 8,200, so that was 7,800 students. Um, and so they're, it's asking to reduce the number of our teachers by 26. I think it's 24 elementary and two middle, two middle school. <laughs> and the first thing I wanna say about that is 7,800, 8,200, and 400, they, they look like estimates rather than real numbers. And I'm just a little bit concerned if that's the actual number of the teachers. I'd, I'd like to have a reassurance if that's possible that that is the actual number or those are the actual numbers. But if you do the math, I'm talking about third grade math. If you do the math, um, 400 students in classes of 24 only amounts to about 17 teachers. Now, if you increase that number to 32, it's only 12 and a half teachers. So why are we reducing our staff to 26? Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, in addition to this, several teachers have asked me, how can we be short teachers when our staff doesn't even cover the amount of students at our school? We have two plus classes at our site that have subs, long-term subs in them. And, it, and this is also true of my site. There are two classes with long-term subs in them. 
So I'm just saying that it seems, it, well, number one, the numbers don't make sense. And number two, it seems really strange to me, the language. And also when we have a nationwide teacher shortage, a few seconds. we should, we should be able to do better. I have confidence that we can all do better. We've had a difficult two years. Let's be transparent. Let's be honest with each other and let's have confidence. Thank you. Board recognizes Joanna Cooper. Thank you. Joanna Cooper. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm a sixth grade teacher at Mesa Linda Middle School, take great pride in my students and have great respect and appreciation for those I work with. Tonight, I'd like to speak about campus safety. We have consistently been understaffed at our school and have struggled to maintain adequate substitutes for both certificated and classified positions. This is especially important when addressing campus safety. Our fantastic security team does their absolute best, but students are consistently out of bounds due to security staff being out and not having a sub to cover for their duties. During lunches, students often wander or race around campus, leading to inadequate supervision and behaviors such as banging on doors, windows, excessive PDA and fights, causing unsafe conditions as well as disruption to classes currently in session. Students often take this opportunity to cut classes and join a second lunch as they are less likely to be noticed among the crowd. Additionally, our student bathrooms have become a hotbed of concerning behavior, such as smoking, drug use, and fighting, causing students to be afraid to use the bathrooms. Bathrooms being shut down due to incidents, causing lack of access to bathrooms during appropriate times, such as before and after school, during passing periods, and at lunch, and leading them leading to them disrupting classes and missing instructional time by utilizing the bathroom during class time. I am speaking for myself and many teachers at my school who want solutions to these issues that are exacerbated when we don't have enough security available to support campus safety. Our administration is doing their best, but they are overwhelmed dealing with the numerous situations that happen on a daily basis on our campus. We also need working cameras that can be used actively stop unsafe situations before they occur and endanger our students. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. The board, the board recognizes Jeanette McCullough. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Good evening, board members, superintendent, fellow staff, and fellow parents. Tonight, I speak before you as both a middle school teacher in special education and as a parent with a child who is excited to go to middle school with her friends next year. She has flourished in Eagle Ranch Elementary School with excellent teachers, principals, and staff to help her through grades two through five, despite her sensory, sensory integration disorder and being on the high end of the autism spectrum and help for my child to perform above grade level in both reading and math with assistance of her 504 to help her along the way. In any other situation, I could say I would be just as excited, but today I'm a parent who is worried and concerned that our district and the superintendent would say that elementary should bring forth an adopted resolution 10.1 to reduce certificated services. This means fellow parents that they mean to reduce the amount of fellow teachers available per students in the classroom for our elementary students to help them succeed. That means that my second daughter coming up in elementary at Eagle Ranch may not have the same educational opportunity of teacher to student ratio in the elementary setting as my first daughter, should that be the school that they pull from. If anything, we should be providing students more resources and more support after a global pandemic. Class sizes should be reduced, not made larger, so that there is less opportunities for behavior, that the district and more positive cooperative learning in the classroom. What will happen to my younger daughter when her class size is increased and she needs to keep taking time out for breaks because noise from her classmates is too much? Does this scenario sound familiar? Does it trigger anyone else's child talking out tantrums or more behavior? At Mesa Linda Middle School, 
Speaking as a teacher, many things are currently affecting discipline. The biggest issue right now is consistently. We consistently rotate administration and staff after year after year. Many left this year because of COVID-19 though. And presently we're short an administrator. We're short many staff members as permanent teachers and there are not enough long-term subs to fill the positions. We're consistently asked to cover teaching positions on our prep and we're not the site favored by subs because of student behavior towards the subs. We're short security and security is not often lent to us by other sites. However, all this inconsistency affects students. Those of us who stick around are trying to help students who can need the consistency the most. The student that my oldest is best friends with needs that consistency as well. That kid who has no stability and consistency needs that consistency at school because it's not at home. And all I'm asking is that we start the year off with enough teachers in position to assist students with their learning. If we are left understaffed at elementary and middle school level year after year, behavior rises mm -hmm. Referrals rise, suspensions rise, and so do expulsions. Presently, we're faced with a situation where administration is often so bogged down with referrals, they can't leave the office because of behavior and show pres their presence. Behaviors on. Sorry. Thank you. The board Thank recognizes you. Abigail. The board recognizes Abigail Inong. Sorry if I butchered your last name. Abigail. Mike, do you see that person on? I am here. Yes, um, hi. Can, can you hear you? me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, my name is Abigail, as you all know. Um, we're from Gus, Frank Gus Franklin. Uh, well, first of all, just wanted to say that gone are the days where school personnel knew what's best for our kids. Now in this generation, parents have to fight for what's best for our kids in school. There's so many made up rules that are in place because of this virus and you can't even say the name of the virus because, you know, social media will censor you or fact checkers will be there right away. All you can ask is why, why is this not making sense? Why wait for another two weeks before you lift the mask mandate? Why not end it today? Makes us wonder what's going to happen between today until March 12th. If this decision was based on science and that mass study shows that masks are in, ineffective in preventing the spread of the virus. Why not end it now? I'm one of the parents from Gus Franklin and I'm sure you know our faces already because we have been standing every morning for three weeks now protesting this unreasonable mask wearing of our kids in school. You would wonder why we're still up there even though our governor has announced the date they will have to lift the, the mask mandate in schools because none of this makes sense at all. We don't, trust any, we don't trust them anymore. If the decision was based on science, it could have been ended effective immediately. We don't need a master's degree in education to know what we are being lied, that we are being lied to and controlled by this bureaucrat. Hey. And it's hurting our children. What's next to this mandate? Last Friday, we're about to pick up our kids. I was invited to sit down with the principal together with the assistant superintendent, Dr. Do Doizan, and we'll serve a letter that our children were enrolled in independent study effective immediately on Monday, whether we like it or not. If we continue to send our kids maskless to school, we will receive a notice of trespassing. We never consent to this. Our kids are peacefully exercising their rights to refuse to wear a mask in school, so they're not trespassing at all. By not accommodating our kids to an in-person education is unlawful. My kids are hurting. It's never fun at school anymore. That's what they keep on saying. Mind you, we love this school and we've been here for five years. My son is always anxious to go to school, always complaining of headache and stomachache, was in school or after. My daughter, on the other hand, had enough of this nonsense. They're smart enough to understand that all of this mask wearing is just for the show, just compared to a bad theatrical acting. And if you are to ask what changed for the past two years, why do we have to protest it now? Why can't we just comply until it's lifted? It is because mm -hmm. we're not stupid anymore. So I'm asking, please make it make sense to us. This has to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. 
Uh, the board recognizes Shabon Long. Ms. Long, you may unmute yourself. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Siobhan Long and I'm an SDC teacher at Mesa Linda Middle School. I am speaking to you this evening on a range of concerns brought to me by middle, Mesa Linda Middle School teachers that all converge on the intersection of safety. We believe the primary duty we have to the children at our school is to provide a safe environment. If our students don't feel safe, they cannot learn. For many months now, we've had a safety crisis at Mesa Linda that appears to be growing every day. Our security officers and administrators are flat out working this situation each and every day, but they are always playing catch up. Please, we are imploring of you tonight to put reinforcements on the ground and do so quickly so we can get this campus situation under control. Our administration needs your support so they can get things back in equilibrium. We are asking district office to spend discretionary money on practical solutions like personnel who can just monitor the entrances to bathrooms or working cameras that monitor those entrances. If there are no uh, people available to hire, please provide a rotation of district office personnel to curb this chaos. Do not ask our, our existing security staff to do more to solve what has been allowed to become a crisis. Their job is security maintenance, and besides, their team are constantly short-staffed at Mesa Linda. On January 26, February 22, 24, and 26, we had instances each day of a weapons threat or the existence of weapons that were later identified as fake. We need urgent action because we have, before we have a real weapon that is brought on campus and someone does irreparable damage. Ms. Linda teachers are also concerned by how district office has pushed back and overturned our administrators decisions to provide a change of placement for certain students. These students have well documented incidents of months of extreme behaviors, only to have them sent right back to the original classrooms at Mesa Linda Middle School, where their needs were too great for us to serve in the first place. Now they are back and more emboldened than ever to disrupt the school culture and learning environment. District office, you are disregarding the months of documented data provided by the professionals. You disregard the needs of these students in crisis and you are disregarding the needs of the other students in those classes to have a safe classroom environment conducive to learning. Do you care about all the students? Mesa Linda teachers have also expressed that there is a the greater priority than stopping the further desensitizing of our Mesa Linda students to the physical seconds. aggression and violent actions and language they see and hear every day. Having our SRO on the ground is a good step in the right direction, but it's not enough. Please cut through the bureaucracy and give us the help we need. Our Mesa Linda... Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The board recognizes Abuleen Yunong. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Abuleen Yunong. You see something like that on mic? So I only see Abigail uh, Yunong. That, that may be her, 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 her da daughter. Okay, we'll keep moving. Uh, the board recognizes Melissa Soto. You may unmute yourself. Melissa Soto. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for um, listening to my concerns. Um, well, we're very disappointed how you have taken action against two of our families in West Franklin. Uh, the level of intimidation and what seems like retaliation is or was unbelievable. I want you to know that we stand behind uh, this, these two families and um, we will not back down till their healthy children are welcome to, to, to resume, no, to school to resume their constitutional right to education, which have been put on hold for the simple fact that they want to breathe freely, smile, speak without difficulties that masking brings. We do not, 
We want, um, we want masks to be a choice for everyone today. Also, I was a bit uh, disturbed when uh, Trustee Turner implied that we're not teaching our children to follow the law. Therefore, we would have um, to deal uh, with it later. Trustee Turner, though uh, this uh, max, um, I'm sorry, mask and vax mandates are not laws, even if they were, do you think slavery was proper, a proper law to follow? Do you shame Rosa Parks or um, MLK for standing up for their God-given freedoms? As, um, as small as a mask may seem, it's important to us. We've done the research, the research, backed it with science, and we consider it um, to be harmful and not, and, and, and this is not your call. If we don't do nothing about what we know is wrong, that is what we and our children would deal with later. This is a valuable lesson, actually, for them uh, on how we can respectfully, peacefully stand for our God-given freedoms and make a change. Thank you. Thank you. I want to recognize the Sonia Shaw. Sonia Shaw. Mike? I don't see a Sonia Shaw in the chat, sir. Great. And I just wanted to wrap back around to Abuline Inong. If that's a separate speaker than the Inong we saw. I see her now. I've asked her to unmute. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Hi, my name is Abulin, a fourth grader in Gus Franklin. I have been peacefully protesting in class by not wearing my mask for about two weeks. On the third week, we were placed on independent study without my parents' consent. I don't, I don't want to wear a mask anymore because it doesn't help our health. It is also our right to question why others can have a big gathering maskless, but we cannot be maskless in school. Is it okay to be eating lunch together in the MBR with a bunch of kids without masks, but we cannot be free inside the classroom? If we change the rule based on science, shouldn't it be effective immediately? I miss the fun in school. Please be more wiser for all the kids in school so we don't suffer anymore. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well stated. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, that concludes our public speakers. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, okay. So that goes on to nine um, govern, governing board mem members read reports and announcements. Um, do I have an, any vol vol volunteers to go first or should I just? Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> Okay, just real quick, I wasn't going to say anything because tonight is a special meeting and I know we're trying to rush and hurry and get it done. Um, but I am just so proud of these kids that called in. Uh, I'm going to get all teary eyed. They are awesome. I, I love to hear children speak and they always tell the truth and they tell how they feel. And I know there's a lot of emotion going on and a lot of feelings and you know, it, it's raw, you know, but hear it, it, it's beautiful. And I encourage children to call in and speak up and let us know how you feel. And of course, the parents also. Um, I was going to say more, uh, but I just really hope that the district is listening to the parents. And if they are following chain of command and they are feeling that uh, the principal is, is not helping and then going to or talking to their teacher not working, going to the principal, not working, going to the superintendent, not working. The chain of command is to email or notify all board members, all five of us, and let us know you want to speak to us. You have a right to do that. You have rights. And if you are doing this and you're following the chain of command, I don't want you frustrated that there is, there is a top and that is the board. It is our job to listen to you. And if you notify us, all of us at once, we are to respond back to you, whether it's the full board, the president, the superintendent, you deserve to be responded back to. 
So if I'm hearing that it's not happening, I'm very disappointed in that because that is our chain of command. Uh, and that is our job as board members to tell the public the chain of command. So again, if you're sending in emails and asking to speak to the board or to be heard, uh, good for you. That is the chain of command. And I really expect our district to follow through with that. So um, again, thank you for calling in. Uh, just a pleasure to hear from all of you tonight. And just thank you. Uh, and that's it. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, Charles de la, la French. Well, I want to say thank you to all our students that spoke tonight. Um, it was nice hearing from them. Um, I thank them for, you know, being brave and speaking up. Um, my next question is actually for um, Dr. Mitchell. I know that you're going to talk about some things during superintendent, but I'd like for you to um, give me some sort of clarification on um, why are we um, laying off teachers? currently when we have a shortage on teachers. Can you provide some clarification for me? Yes, thank you. Uh, the short answer is, is, is this just being put on the spot like this, but the short answer is the fact that we are staffed for a district of 400 kids more than we have. Also, the, 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 the discrepancy that you see uh, in the numbers that Ms. Martinelli was talking about, uh, that is because we are funded based on ADA we have one of the poorest ADA uh, in the county, we're about 89%, which is really low for elementary. We've actually estimated at 91%, but 89 is kind of where we are right now. So uh, in, addition to, in addition to declining enrollment, which the entire state is experiencing, the whole state is experiencing declining enrollment. So that's one. So every, almost every school district in the state is, is, is closed, it's, it's reducing numbers. But number two, the numbers that we do have, which is about 7,800, only about 7,100 actually come to school. So, so that's about a 90, 89% attendance rate. We're funded by ADA. And so therefore, uh, our, we have currently we have 50 teachers that we're funding out of ESSER. We were able to get that flexibility from the county superintendent schools office to be able to transfer the, the salaries and benefits of 50 of our teachers uh, into the ESSER funds, provided that we will reduce them over two years. Uh, because if we don't right now, we would not have a, a balanced budget. We, we, are, um, we are obligated to submit a three-year budget, not just one year at a time. And so Mr. Krause is obligated to estimate our costs for the next three years, giving cost of living raises, inflation, and, and, and also staffing, staffing costs. And so we need to reduce 50 teachers. We cannot afford to put the 50 teachers back into our general fund budget. We would be negative and, and, our, and our board, we would not be able to certify our budget. The, the, all school districts budgets are certified by the County Office of Education. So this idea that somehow I or my administrative team or the board can make any decisions, our budgets have to ultimately be approved by the San Bernardino County to attend the school's office. And they have very stringent standards in terms of approving a three-year budget. So um, the, the, the idea is this too. Think about, oh, so when we look about, um, when we think about, well, why do we have vacancies? So let's think about it like this. So for this year, 21, 22, we said it, we've, the board approved the budget back in the, the, the June prior to say, we're gonna give you, Keenan, we're gonna give you and the team 100 teachers. So we build our budgets on 100 teachers. And so of those 100 teachers, we may, not, we may not have been able to hire 10 teachers. And so you have 10 vacancies, but, but the board has approved for us to fund 100 teachers. That, so, so the fact that there's vacancies in, it has nothing to do with layoffs. So now we're saying, okay, for 22, 23, the board is only gonna fund 90 teachers. So that, but but even even though so now we're only paying for a total of ninety teachers. This year we're paying for a total of one hundred teachers, and that's why you see vacancies because we just haven't we've had a hard time to fill those vacancies. So what was said earlier, yes, there is a national teacher shortage. Uh, what, what what I'm saying now, yes, there is a declining enrollment throughout the state of California. People are leaving California in droves because of the cost of living. We also know that the medical care is increasing. 
So all these things are happening. Kids are having, uh, uh, people are actually having less babies, you know, probably largely because gas prices are going, the cost of bread, milk, eggs, all these things are going to the roof in California. California is extremely hard to live in, in terms of, in terms of salary. So it's this idea that we, we're reducing the total number of staff that we have to serve the kids that we have. Class sizes won't get bigger because we still are obligated to honor contractual limits. So we're not increasing staff. It's almost like this. It's like you have a family of four, but you cook dinner every night for 10 people. So it costs to feed, it costs to cook dinner for 10 people, but then we are also wasting a significant amount of food. So the dollars that we're spending to be overstaffed could be dollars that could be going to other things. And so it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard decision to make. We are working super hard to make sure that our reduction in force does not affect actual people. Because as was said earlier, we have a lot of positions that we haven't filled. And so this is the process that we're going, that we're going through. Uh, we have to reduce the size of our staff. You might say, well, you know, we're gonna, back in, in September, we're gonna rehire teachers. Well, we can't rehire teachers until kids actually show up. And so it's, it's, it's difficult to predict like that right now. So my recommendation to the board to keep our, our board sustainable, our district sustainable and solvent for the next few years is we have to reduce staff. So this is a matter of right sizing the district. It has nothing to do with performance, it has nothing to do with trying to increase class size. Um, it's, it's related to the vacancies that we have, but it's not causing the vacancies that we have. We actually have to become a smaller organization um, to, to be more right sized for the number of students that we're serving. And I hope that provides some, some better. Uh, and, and teachers, staff, parents, if you want to meet with me, Go into a little deeper. I'm happy, happy to explain these things. These things aren't hard. I, 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 I'm not looking forward to it. The reality of it is, is that years over years of being heavy staffed um, has come. It just is the timing has come to my administration that we need to right size our district. We're hopeful with all the, you know, we got eight, nine hundred homes being built. We're hopeful like the, that people buying those homes will have young families and. Be, Bring their uh, bring their kids to our schools, um, and so we, we're 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 optimistic about that. In fact, we are seeing new kids enroll, but the problem is we're not we're not getting a net gain. So so Dr. Dryzon was sharing with me last week that we had 250 brand new kids enroll last week, but we had an equal number of kids leave our district. So we're not growing. We're, we're adding new people. We have such a high turnover rate of students and families that we're not getting a net gain. And so the name of this game is the number of students. A parent said earlier that we are funded by students. Absolutely. We're receiving probably, I don't know, Michael, ten, twelve thousand dollars per student. It's a significant amount of dollars when you think about 400 kids. And then if you think about an 89% attendance rate, so of the 7,800 kids that we have, only 90% only of them are coming on a daily basis. We're funded by that. So we gotta increase our we gotta increase our daily attendance. We need to increase our enrollment. And we need to continue to really be mindful and watchful and good stewards of the public dollars that we have. And we got and we gotta be we gotta make sure that our district is the right size uh, and has the right size of staff to service the number of kids that we have. And so trustee uh French, thank you for posing that question so I can give a little bit of information to our staff and parents. And again, it's a, it's a, deeper, it's a deeper issue, it takes way more time than, than my, than my uh, description here, but I'm, so I'm happy to go deeper with, with anybody, parents or staff, so thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, uh, Trustee Webb, Webster. Oh, okay. Um, well, I wanna start tonight by applauding our students. Um, I know kind of following suit, but that was super amazing to see. Um, our kids out talking, expressing their opinions, um, using that, that, you know, freedom of speech this is a beautiful, do not get discouraged, keep going at it. Um, as for, you know, all of our other speakers, I will, I want you to know that I appreciate every single person who spoke tonight. Um, more so, I appreciate your opinion. 
I want to know these opinions. I want to know where our district is, where our parents are. More importantly, where our staff is, where everyone is. So I want to close tonight by encouraging everyone who has a comment, a concern, reach out to us. We're your board. We represent the community. And I look forward to hearing from all of you on, on your concerns. So I'm going to leave it there, but I do want to say thank you for everyone coming out tonight um, and speaking up, letting us know where you're at. Okay, thank, thank you. Trustee Turn Turner. Thank you. Um, again, I would like to um, thank everyone for coming out tonight, sharing your concern. As with all my other trustees, I, I love hearing from kids. Um, you know, you let us know how you feel. Um, no one liked wearing that mask. I hate wearing that mask. And soon with the, you know, new federal well, state guidelines coming out, you know, we will see a change. Um, to the teachers and this layoff, the board has concerns as well, you know, and we're talking about your livelihood, your, 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 your livelihood your well-being, you know, and I agree. I, I hate to see anyone lose their job or get laid off, you know, and we have questions and concerns. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, we will be having a discussion a little later, you know, um, and, it, and, and the decision is, is hard. It really is. So um, thank you again, you know, for your participation tonight. Um, and uh, you are, we hear, we hear what you say. I've written down every single last speaker and name and, and what you talked about. So it's very important and for us here on the board to hear your concerns and comments. That's all I have, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, I, I want, wanted to share that, you know, the board and the, cabinet, we didn't make up these mandates. We didn't sit in the back and let's, let's say, let's say what we can do to just make things hard. We had to follow, follow them. You know, I didn't like them. I have to follow, follow them. I teach in a classroom. I have to wear the mask. I hate to wear the mask, but I have to wear, wear them. And I will wear it until March 11th. 11th and then come March 4, 14th it's my my choice to not wear wear it and I will not wear wear it and I will respect my stu students who choose to wear wear it and I was and I will res respect my my co-workers if they choose to wear wear it um, but you know the school dis district as a gov government and entity, we have to follow the mandates. You know, we, we did, we didn't like it, but we had to. And, you know, and it wasn't to pun, punish the kids, okay? That would never, never, okay? And um, cross our minds. We want what's best for the kids. We want what's best for the di district. And that means this board and this cab cabinet must protect the dis district. When this whole COVID thing hit and we had closed down, there were board mem members from diff different dis districts who were worried about if they op opened up, would they get, get sued if somebody caught COVID? The threat of being sued is always over our head. That doesn't change. It's always. I didn't re realize how much it was, how it hangs. You know, so it's our job to protect the dis district so that it can keep doing its job to, to ed educate our ch children. Okay, I didn't agree with the gov governor. Okay, he his, his science science and my pers personal opinion is that new science science. I don't know, 
but he is the gov gov governor and the cpdh dur 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 during this 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 time of emerge emergency which will end soon had some some pow power and we had to fall, follow it you know this board doesn't take pleasure in exacting pow power that's not it that's not who we are at all at all okay um as for the resolution, this is one of the hardest things we've had to do. I've got a big rock in my stum stomach. Like I haven't been sleeping and I wonder why, you know? But again, we have to, we gotta make, make sure that we're sol solvent in the end. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard, it's dif difficult. Um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and end it there, and we'll go on to a uh, new biz business, uh, oh. res uh, ten point zero zero one res resolution to re reduce part particular kinds of cert certificate gated ser services. I need a motion so we can open up for discussion. Wait, wait, wait. Can I interject one moment? I think I'm we're in. missing. Oh, you're in? I'm okay. in. Yeah, hun. Thank you. Okay. I'll be quiet. Also, no, 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 that... no, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thanks mm -hmm. for look, 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 looking out for, for her because Trusty I didn't Vince, see her. Yes. I want to remind you that we have a read in as well. Okay. So. so uh, Xenia, do we do we um, call for the vote and discuss and read in, or do you do that before? I believe you still have to have the motion, and you still have to have a second so that you can go ahead and do the read. After the motion and the second? Correct. All right, thank you. Okay, so I need a mo motion. Webster motions. Thank you. And I need a sec second. Reference seconds. Thank you. Okay, now we're open for discussion and that means you can read yeah. the resolution. Absolutely, I'm gonna share so that folks can see it. Um, so we do have, um, in, in the interest of keeping the uh, um, uh, in alignment with the intent of the education code uh, to lay off at least senior staff, we've made the following adjustments uh, to this resolution. Uh, everything is right here. The biggest change is that we've moving from a K-6 um, RIF to a K-8. So that would include um, um, multiple subject teachers at the middle school and elementary uh, prior prior with just multiple subject teachers at, um, at the elementary school. And then uh, the next change is a change in uh, skipping rules. And so the education code section 44955D authorizes this board to deviate from terminating a certificated employee in order of seniority if the dim district demonstrates a specific need for personnel to teach a specific course or to provide counseling or nursing and the employee being retained has special training and experience necessary to teach the course or provide services which other employees with more seniority do not possess. This board has determined that a specific and compelling need exists to employ and retain certain employees who one, teach in a departmentalized position that requires a single subject credential, two, teach transitional kindergarten, three, teach a dual immersion course, or four, occupy a specialty position, including special education, nursing, and counseling. And then the second change is here. Um, I'll just read letter E. The competency as described in Education Code Section 4495B, 44956, 44957, for the purposes of bumping and reemployment, shall necessarily include one, 
possession of a valid credential in the relevant subject area. We're cutting this language around middle school. And then two, to bump into a specialty position, including but not limited to dual immersion, special education, transitional kindergarten, and TOSA. TOSA stands for teacher on special assignment, and at least one year of prior experience in the assignment within the past years. Uh, those are the amendments to resolution uh, number 2122.21. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Qu questions board? Well, um, I, I stated a lot of my questions earlier uh, regarding this. Um, you know, I'm really disappointed in receiving um, this amended resolution at the final minutes uh, during this board member meeting. And I'm really disappointed in that. I feel that um, we knew we had discussed our budgeting issues. Um, I think that the work should have been done earlier. The board should have known um, what positions we should have had a list. Um, I, I feel that we should have did position control. You know, I understand the need to keep the district, district solvent, but at the end of the day, we don't work at the spare of the moment. You know, these things take planning and these things take time. We're dealing with people's lives. Okay, and we cannot at the last minute make these type of changes without the board even having an opportunity to, to, to dissect this resolution and look at it and, and ask questions. I don't have a copy of that. I'm looking at a screen and I don't like that. I don't like making decisions at despair at the moment when it deal with people's lives. I don't like that at all. I didn't get on this board to do that. We knew our position, we know, we've known it for some time now. We've had declining enrollment over the past we hope this is our first year opening back up, but we knew that. And so to bring this to the board at this time, at this hour, to be done before March 15th is not the way that I want to do business in this district. We, we, we're dealing with real people here. We're in the business of educating children. And in order for that to happen, our teachers have to be feel confident in their positions and hearing a parent, hearing um, a parent saying that their teacher was gone and her son doesn't want to come to school because the teacher is not in the class. So, you know, that's, that, that's heartbreaking. Years ago, we had to lay off teachers and I made this statement earlier. You know, we brought them back, but over the summer they lost, lost healthcare you know, we had several teachers that were, were expecting children and they lost their health care. Now the district brought them back, but we need, to, we need to mitigate these things. We need to look at the process. We had time and to, 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 to make these changes and do it right. I wanna look at every position. I want a list of teachers. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm, at a, I'm, at a, I'm at a loss right now. I don't like to be bagged into a corner and forced to make a decision that I don't agree with. Yes, I have the responsibility to keep the district solvent. I have a responsibility to make decisions based on the best education for our children. And I'm not happy right now, not with, not with this. Trustees, do I have questions? Are there any questions? And, and I, would, I would like to say one other thing. Every day we get a list. Every day we get an update of how many teachers are out sick, how many classes are covered, and I just I, I would just like to commend those teachers that that take on those additional students. I mean, every day we have classes that are not covered, and we we don't have enough substitute teachers to cover these classes. Mind you, I'm sure that the teachers that are out they're out because of illness or other reasons. You know, COVID is still around us. 
and and we're still dealing with that you know and so um i would just i just want to commend those teachers that come to work every day and provide the services that they were hired to do thank you so much i appreciate that trustees Okay, um, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the last, I don't know. I feel like, like we're going through this full speed and I'm worried we're gonna kind of overreact and we're gonna let go a bunch and then bring them back, you know? And that's kind of traumatic. Um, I, I understand why we are doing what we are doing. Um, I think this, this last man, minute, minute change kind of threw a wrench, you know, at, at us. And I understand the change because I believe uh, this is more to the spirit of the, the ed, ed code, right? You, you did these change, changes so that because the other way it would have affect, affected te teachers more up and we're we're trying to to just keep it at the the least senior seniority my hope is that you know we've had enough retirements resignations people being hired into the dis district that no one is is let let go that's my hope i'm always hopeful you know sometimes hope's all you got um but does anybody have any other questions of dr mitchell i don't have any questions i just wanted to say that i know that we talked about this quite some time ago this is not something that came up last month or two months ago regarding um, us being top heavy. So um, I know that I too hope that with our, retire our retirees and our, um, and our people that have resigned that this will actually um, kind of, um, even out, but I know that um, this is a this is a hard one because we're talking about um, people's livelihood, people's lives, people's children, um, and that's all I have to say. No, thank thank you. Okay, well we 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 have to vote. Okay, so. Okay. Want me to take the vote? Take the vote. All right, Trustee Eckes. Did we lose Trustee Eckes? Oh, her name. Michael, do you see her? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know why I keep getting muted. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, are we taking the vote right now? Yes. yes. Yes, uh, I vote no. Trustee LaFrench? Yes. Trustee Turner? Mm. I'd like to be back to a corner. No. Trustee Webster? Um, Trustee Webster, I. Trustee Benz. Benz, I. Mo motion passes three two. Okay, move moving on to 10.02, approve a con 
contract for legal serv services. I need a mo motion to approve. Let's see, turn on motion to approve. And I need a sec second. The franchise second. Okay. Um, we've had discuss discussion in closed session, so we don't need discussion now. Um, so I guess we could take a vote. Sorry, Trustee Eckes. Uh, I motion to abstain. I have a conflict of interest. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee Webster. Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Bent. Bent, aye. Mo, mo, motion passes, would, would I say four, four, zero, zero? With one abstage, abstention. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now we're on to 11. That's the sup superintendent's <laughs> report. I'm sorry, I was waiting for someone to speak. So I want to thank you, board. I know it's uh, this is a special board meeting. I want to thank the board um, for the hard decisions before us. And so I know this is a struggle. We will work extremely hard to uh, reduce vacancies and to you know promote people in the Tosa and coach and put some of our great teachers into some AP positions that'll be well, I'm sure to be open and uh, retirement resignations will mitigate this as much as possible. So, uh, thank you for uh, your leadership tonight. We know it was tough. Uh, tonight, uh, board, I just will take like to take a few minutes to discuss uh, the governor's recent uh, announcements uh, and the uh, California Department of Public Health's change or update uh, to the uh, uh, K twelve public school guidance for fat for face masks. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, share a PowerPoint together. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can see uh, PowerPoint. Thank you so much. All right, give me one second to get myself together here. All right, can you still see PowerPoint? Yes. Thank you. So, 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 board, I wanted to use my comments tonight to provide a brief update to the board on what we've learned this past week has been an um, exciting week in education across the nation. Uh, lots of announcements, lots of press conferences. I did have an, a, an opportunity to attend the governor's, uh, the governor's press conference. I attended a high desert superintendent meeting. Uh, that's a meeting that um, all the high desert superintendents meet together. I did have an opportunity to meet with the uh, San Diego County Superintendent of Schools uh, and his team who went through uh, the mandates. And we also have had a couple of side meetings with some other advisory groups. And so this is what we've been able to put together and understand and learn from uh, the governor's announcements. So this is a summary of the governor's announcements. Number one, the school masking mandate is lifted at the end of the day on March 11th. Uh, the first day of in-class instruction with voluntary masking is March 14th. Uh, there will be no distinction between vaccinated and unvaccinated, so everybody will be treated the same. Uh, this plan is, is executed in collaboration with the states of Washington and Oregon. They've adopted the exact same standards uh, that the California governor has. Um, Local county health departments can still impose stricter masking guidelines. That's the CDPH, that's California Department of Health, San Bernardino, uh, San Bernardino uh, County Department of Health. And so they have aligned themselves to this masking lift. And then lastly, Kyle OSHA, which governs our staffing, has aligned their, gu their guidance related to staffing. So this is what, these are, these are rules for personnel and staffing as it relates to indoor face masking. So, that's where we stand with that. Uh, 
rationale for the uh, optional face mask. It's very different than what we might think. Uh, number one, the, the, the metrics are now based on three pieces of data, COVID hospitalizations, hospital capacity, and new COVID cases. Before, we were, before these rules were being um, uh, derived from positivity rates, but now we're seeing that, uh, that people are still getting COVID, of course, but we're seeing that the hospitalizations are not being impacted by COVID, uh, by, by COVID patients. So that means that people are catching COVID and sick at home for a few days and then, but not being hospitalized. So for going forward, what the CDPH and the CDE is suggesting is to use hospitalization rates as a trigger for either increased or lacked COVID, uh, COVID rules and mandates. And so that's very different. Before we were being very active to positivity rates, you know, we'd have the Super Bowl and then uh, folks, folks, or you'd have uh, Christmas holidays and the, the positivity rates would spike and then everything was shut down. But now we're just going strictly by hospitalizations. Uh, no, 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 number two, according to the CDC, 70% of the US, including San Bernardino County, are not required to wear a mask based upon uh, this, these, new, these, hospital, these hospitalization standards, as opposed to positivity rates. So it's a really big, it's a really big change. Number three, we see a decline in case rates and hospitalizations all up and down California. Um, Number four, the CDPH uh, updated K-12 schools guidance to reflect students and staff members in K-12 stand settings. Which they, basically, they said they strongly recommend a mask, but it is not required to wear a mask. So CDPH are the ones who, the health orders that are coming from CDPH are really whose orders we're following. Um, and so they're suggesting that it is no longer an indoor mask mandate, but it is um, strongly recommended. Uh, some additional notes on some other areas. Number one, masks will no longer be required for unvaccinated individuals, but will be strongly recommended for all individuals in most indoor settings. So, so the CDPH is still saying, hey, it, it's, strong, it's strongly recommended for your mask indoors, but not required. Um, masks are still required, however, in high transition settings, public transit, emergency shelters, healthcare settings, correctional facilities, homeless shelters, and long-term care facilities. So there's still, these, are, these are where they're still required. School buses are part of the K-12 school guidance and do not fall under public transit. So you'll see in bullet, bullet, bullet two um, that, that uh, public transit is required to wear a mask, but, but our school buses that transport our kids are not considered public transit and thus the face masks on school buses are optional. And then lastly, uh, AB 361, uh, we, we did ask for a legal opinion on this, whether or not the board can continue in, um, in Zoom, Zoom meetings. AB 361 has not in, been impacted by uh, the governor's announcement. A, um, AB 61 is based upon the fact that we are still in a COVID environment and the board may still choose to convene meetings via Zoom. We did get clarification from our legal counsel on that today. Um, my recommend, given all of this, my recommendations are as follows. Number one is I, I'm suggesting that we implement the updated guidance and make indoor face masks optional for staff and students effective March uh, 2022. I'm recommending that we continue to supply PPE equipment to all schools monthly and upon request that includes face. We have hundreds of thousands of face masks. We will get rid of the cloth ones. Uh, CDC is saying that those aren't as good, but we have hundreds of thousands of desk shields, face shields, hand sanitizers. And so I, we will still continue to supply those sources. We do an automated delivery to each one of our schools at the first of the month, everything they need. And if they, and if they need additional stuff, they just, they just call down it off to, to the warehouse and get those things delivered. We have buckets and we have a whole warehouse full of this stuff. So we think we should continue to use it. Number three, uh, we'll continue to supply specialized PPE equipment to custodial staff. You know, we've got a host of things to keep them safe as they're cleaning and disinfecting our classrooms. And we want to continue. We, we created a whole new uh, cleaning and disinfecting routine 
based upon COVID, we think that we should continue that or modify it slightly, but, but may primarily continue to clean and disinfect as we have. We think it's good practice. We think that what we've learned as a school system in terms of washing your hands frequently and, uh, and uh, uh, disinfecting your work areas and you're you know, asking our secretaries to disinfect keyboards and computer screens. You know, we're all sitting banging on stuff with our fingers and then eating at the same time. So this is just good practice to disinfect and we'll continue that. And lastly, we will continue to monitor emergent COVID guidance. Uh, we think in the next couple of weeks, more stuff is going to come out and adjust your policies accordingly. That includes like sick leave and contact tracing, and we're still gathering information on that. And so, board, that, that, that is, these are my recommendations for how we might respond uh, to the update in the California Department of Public Health updated guidance, as well as the governor's um, announcement. And so, would uh, open it up for a discussion among the board, and you can give me any direction or guidance. I'm happy to happy to, uh, to uh, meet meet your needs. Thank you. So, board, do you have any thoughts or reactions to this uh, this um, this recommendation, or if you'd like me to go a, di a different direction, uh, I'm I'm happy to uh, to comply. Uh, this is Trustee Trust Eckes. Uh, I I would like to see us just I mean do the mass uh, unmasking now. Um, I don't understand why we have to wait. You know, um, it, it's been announced. Um, it doesn't really make much sense between now and the 14th. Um, many people have unmasked uh, other countries. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. I think we need to unmask now, uh, hopefully starting tomorrow, maybe Friday, the sooner the better. You know, um, I think people need to have a choice and uh, that's my personal opinion and having people call in tonight and the kids, I know they wanna be back in school and um, it just have their freedom back. So um, I know I'm only one board member, but that would be my recommendation um, and I don't know, that, that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to say, but thank you. Thank you, Trustee Eckes, and I did speak with the JPA again, as well as our legal counsel, and they're recommending that we follow the, uh, the uh, updated guidance and make it effective March 14th. We are still under, we still have a liability concern. So that's why I gave this recommendation on March 14th. Thank you. Other, other, other trustees? Yes. I would like to say I'm happy that <clears throat> even though I will continue to wear my mask, I'm happy that the governor um, lifted these guidelines and made it um, uh, uh, optional. Um, before the, the district, we had no choice but to follow these mandates. Our insurance company, when we say the JPA, that's our insurance company. And they let us know under no uncertain terms that if we follow, if we did not follow this mandate, that we would, and if someone sued us, we could be sued individually. And, and that, that made my decision. Um, like we were threatened to be sued tonight for, for following the mandate. But, you know, the decision to mask or unmask right now on March 14th is good. And I can support that. I can support um, students if they do not wanna wear a mask or if teachers do not want a mask. But at the same time, I'm getting emails from parents that want that, that uh, support the mask mandate. I'm getting emails from teachers that support the mask mandate. And teachers are saying that Step, parents are saying that if you do not follow the, the law board, you will be sued. If someone comes to my house sick and I see that you're not following the ma mandate, the law, I will sue you. So we're being threatened to be sued all over the place. I'm happy that um, it's a choice. It's voluntary if you want to wear it and we will not be sued. We cannot be sued. And I, I appreciate that. Um, I feel that we need to continue to disinfect as though COVID is still here, which it is. 
I don't want us to lift anything. I want our classrooms clean. I want our students to come to school and if they touch something that it's clean. So they won't be taking that to taking COVID back on. And so um, these guidelines, I did feel that I would like, I did recommend that we did do a survey on parents, um, but we still have the PPE equipment. We still have all of the equipment here. So if, if um, a student want a mask, we can still give it to them. Teachers want masks or, or staff employees want masks. We still have those face coverings for them. So that is good. Um, I just hope this all go away soon, you know, because it, it's not easy following mandates, but you have to follow the law. You have to follow the law in order to be in order to be safe. And so I, I am a stickler for doing that and I will. So um, with that being said, that's all I have. I'm looking forward to the 14th. So when our children, if they wanna come to school without a mask and then the board have to vote on whether or not we wanna come back um, um, to meet in public. And so that that will be on the next agenda, I'm assuming. So yes, 315, the there. board will be considering that. Okay. So I'm glad, again, I'm glad that a decision is made because we were mandated to do things that no one supported us in doing it, you know, and being blamed for something that we had no control over, you know, it was, it was, it was a little disappointing, but that's okay. We, we, that's okay. Now we have a decision and we'll follow that. Okay. Uh, trust, trustee La 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 French. Well, I want to say that I'm I'm happy that everyone has a choice. Maybe um, the uh, mask will now go down on the value on Amazon because you know they're about a hundred a hundred dollars. You know, about thirty days ago. So now I don't have to pay so much, and I'm glad everybody has a choice to wear them or not wear them. I think that um, everyone should have had a choice in the beginning. And if you want to wear them, you wear them. If you don't, you don't. I will wear mine and I'm glad Amazon will now have to come down off their prices. That's all. Okay, uh, Trustee Webb, Webster. Um, I have to say, I, this might be a little too personal, but when I told my daughter that this mandate was ending on the 14th. I, I think she was happier then than on her birthday in January. Um, and that's one thing I've been firm on and I will remain firm is the option matters. And, you know, giving us options, giving our district options is extremely important. You know, I, I do want to take a minute and kind of give recognition to Dr. Mitchell, just because, you know, coming to us with this, this update, showing us, you know, what steps that you've already kind of prepared or planned on doing, it gives me a little bit more, more confidence. You know, I'm very happy to see that we're going to keep up the disinfecting routines. Um, I'm glad that we're going to be able to offer anyone who wants a mask the option for a mask. Um, I think those are the important steps to remember. I, I've been saying it for a while. COVID's been here for two years and we've gained the knowledge, we've gained the, the information from those around us. And it is time for us to, as communities, to start making our own COVID protocols and start making our own COVID pathway. Um, so I am glad to see that we are given that option now. I'm glad that we're given options. And then I'm, I'm glad to see that we have a plan. I think that is what I'm happiest about. We have a plan on how we're going to move forward in regards to this. So that's kind of all I wanted to say. But thank you for listening to me. Thank, thank, thank you for the compliment, Trustee Webster. Thank you. Um, I just want to say I have never been so excited for a countdown <laughs> as I am for March 11th at 1159. I may even stay awake and I don't do 
do that for New Year Year's Eve. Um, at my 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 school, we we have to wear the mask inside and outside. So I've got it on all day except when I eat eat lunch alone in my classroom. Um, I want us to go forward forward from this and respect each other. If somebody chooses to wear the mask, respect them. It's okay. Don't call them sheep. Don't call them cowards. You know, I, I had had a parent, parent say she actually li likes the mask because her kids have not, not been as sick, sick as much, you know, and she li likes the mask because her kids aren't, aren't sick, sick as much, you know, um, and I'm go going to respect those who choose to wear the mask as I will respect those who choose not, not to wear, wear the mask. And I hope that this goes out throughout our com community. And I am very happy that we will be fo following this new mandate. So this brings me joy, you know, and, and I just, I want to thank Thank um, our cab, cab, cabinet, our staff, the te teachers, the certificate, the cl classified for hanging in there, you know, for go, going through through this, okay? And that, that's all I've got. Well, thank you, board. Those are my comments. Okay. So now it's time for 12.01, adjournment. Can I get a mo motion to adjourn? Trustee Turner, I motion that we adjourn. Okay, I'm gonna give the mo motion to Turner and the sec second to Becky. Thank you. Can, can, can I get a vote, please? Trustee Atkins? Aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner? Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee Webster. Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Benz. And Benz, aye. Motion passes five zero zero zero. And Ev, everyone, please have a good good night. Madam good President, night. the time is nine oh four. And the time is nine nine oh four. Thank you, Miss Love. Thank Love you. Bay. Have a good evening, Thank everyone. You. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Oh, Dr. Mitchell already jumped off, huh? Yep. Hey, Z. Oh, yes. Can I get an email of the the one as well? The revised resolution? Yes. Thank you. You got it. Have Thank a good you. night, gorgeous. You. you too. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>